Okay, we're entering the shop. John, this is a movie, kind of showing you what I've got here. I'm going to turn to the left, back at the door. We've got um, the jet table saw. Some this is this is part of the old shop, if you recall. Window to the side of the garage. My uh, joinery bench, my woodworking bench. Some tools on it, chisels and stuff, radio, old model airplanes. I replaced my bandsaw with a Rikon this year. I picked up used off Craigslist. Nice improvement. I can resaw with it. And tools. Cabinet. Now we move into the new area of the shop. This used to be the other side of the garage. I opened this up last November to give myself more room. So I had a buck and Buck's buddy there. And coming all the way around back to the door we came in. So over here I've got tools I don't use very often. I've got a spindle sander that's sort of stacked there for once in a blue moon when I need it. I got this sander here which I use for tool making um, to sharpen metal stuff. I don't use it for wood really at all. Then this is I use occasionally for wood, belt sander, very occasionally. I don't use it for much. Toolbox and a bridge port. This is a bridge port I bought from Smith, an old one. It serves as my drill press and all kinds of uh, various things I can do with it uh, beside the bridge, uh, the drill press. Give you a nice close up of Buck. Hi, Buck. And then over here, some shelves. Um, with stuff on them, you know, the usual clutter. And my other bench, which is sort of for a general purpose, metalworking, what have you. In fact, right now I'm, I'm making two planes. These have got uh, oil on them right now. These are, this is called a, a round plane. It creates a round profile. You see that? And this is a hollow plane. It creates a hollow. It's a mat, it's a mate, they're the same radius. And then over here, I've got my, this is my sharpening center. Um, I built this cabinet, I've got a drawer with all the stuff I need in it. Down the bottom here, I've got a pull out with a grinder father's old grinder for grinding irons and then up top here the thing I use all the time this thing's called a work sharp and it comes with glass discs that you would put these adhesive abrasives on to hone tools so the coarsest is 80 and then it goes all the way up to um, this uh, leather strop all the way up to very very fine so it just it's like a little platter spins slow and you put your tool on here or you can run the plain knife up underneath to cut the bevel if you put the grit on the bottom and just actually it, anyway it's pretty cool and it saves me a lot of labor since I use a lot of edge tools it makes uh, keep putting an edge on something that I like a plain iron or a chisel, very easy. I heat this shop all winter. Um, I heat it just with this little 110 volt heater, that's it. it. It's good enough. I keep it about 60 and I manage the uh, humidity. Oh, on my trash barrel there I just have a little humidifier. So I got enough room here to to get stuff done and not be tripping over myself, but not a ton of room. It's just, you know, I have to clean up a lot. I built this box on top of here for storing when I was building guitars. You could have one, one in the progress and, you know, it's a safe place to park parts while you're working on something. So you can see there's some necks up there and a guitar here that Ed started and didn't finish and another one I'm working on. And I keep the glue up here because it's nice and warm up high. 
And that's about it. Bye, Buck. Okay, so this is what I've been working on, John. Um, this is a rack of wooden planes. These are antique molders right here. Um, these two create a tongue and groove joint on three quarter inch wood so that you can put pieces of three quarter inch wood together to form like backs of cabinets and stuff. This is a set of bead planes. They put a bead on the edge of a board. I'll show you that in a minute. This is called a moving philister plane. I'll point out with a better finger. And um, it creates a rabbit. And this is what I've been working on. A whole set of these things are called hollows and rounds. I'm not even quite done. I'm still making a few. I'll show you those in a minute. This is, an, this is a vintage um, smoothing plane. Um, this is an ENT ring plane made by the guy who built my house. I have a collection of these. So this is just for smoothing wood. It's been restored by me and works fine. And this is something called plow plane, also made by ring. I got this on eBay. It was a miracle I found this. And I restored it. Um, this creates grooves in wood. It has a fence that you can adjust and then you plow a groove with this cutter here so like any kind of, any groove that you would cut on a table saw or with a router table when you don't have those tools this is the kind of thing you would use. You can change the cutters out for different width cutters for uh, different grooves. I have a metal version of this in Stanley as well but this wooden one works really good. Okay so I'm at the bench let me show you a little example of what these planes used like. So what I have here is a rabbit plane so if you're not cutting a rabbit on a table saw, it's the simplest tool in the world. It's a chunk of wood. I made this. And you put the iron in it. It's square. Very important, the iron goes right to the edge of the plane so you can cut right up to a shoulder. And I'm going to show you this and in in, I'll, I'll demonstrate. And then this is one of my hollow planes, a round plane. It's got the, this, they come in different sizes, so I'm going to use a rabbit plane in combination with the hollows to create a profile on this little chunk of wood here. Okay, so to use them as simple as can be, it's a sticking board. You just run the rabbit down like that. You trim the other side of the rabbit, you just go in this direction. And you have a finished rabbit. I roughed that one out first. And then if I was going to use it with the hollow, and I have this one set for a very fine cut, so I'll grab one that has, can take a ranker cut. Like this. I'll create a bevel on here. this sort of arrangement and then I'll come along with the hollow and follow that like a fence very quick work here but creating this thumbnail profile. I hope I'm holding this up in the, in the viewfinder. So I'm just really working sloppy here, but you can see basically the gist of how it's done. Alright, I'm back. My wimpy little old camera only has a one gigabyte memory card, so I had to go unload it. I'm going to show you a little more. First I'm going to show you the profile we cut with the hollow plane. I'm going to show you how this plane functions. Pretty simple, obviously. And I'm going to show you what this plane is. This is a dedicated molding plane called a bead plane. There are zillions of these profiles. They're the equivalent of buying a router bit to make a shape. Whereas the hollows and rounds are more general. You can creatively make any shape you want. So I'm going to just show you both planes in action real quick. So of course we just flatten our stock with the smooth plane. 
make sure it's, it's what we want. And then to run the bead on it, it's just that once the bead plane is all adjusted, it's just a matter of, of just, it's the simplest tool in the world. You, run, you make a bead quicker with this than you ever would with a router bit. Um, <laughs> once you get the tool set up, you just plane until the plane stops cutting. And then bring the camera back over. You can see we have, hopefully you can see, it's not the best video camera, a bead, you know, run on the edge of the board, an eighth inch bead. And I've got these in a few sizes. I picked these up because a bead is a very useful, I use them a lot. So that's one thing. And maybe I'll set up and I'll show you the plow real quick. Okay, we're going to run the plow. We're going to make a groove. Uh, you can see these tools are pretty much useless without a bench designed to hold the work. So I've got this piece of wood stuck between these bench dogs, also flush with the edge of the bench to make it convenient for the fence of my plow to actually utilize both the bench and the, and the thing. Plowing, you always start on one end of the stock and work your way back. It's actually really easy. Um, I'll show you real quick. stop on the plow so I can plow just down as deep as I need to go. I got a little sloppy here. Okay, I hit the depth stop. The plow is done. And so plowed that little groove in there. Easier to see right there. And that's it. It's about, the tool's about as old as my house. 170 years. So the rabbit, the plow, uh, the smooth planes, the hollows and rounds, and these are some tools I use to make them. That's the story. Oh, and there's some metal ones. I still use those too. <laughs> oh yeah. Here's my here's where I started. Your dad's old stuff plus my other metal planes. But I'm really using the wooden ones now more.